music, so let's go straight to Dr. Scott Warner. Unmute. Hi, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Dr. Scott Werner. I am a previous medical doctor. I no longer practice medicine because I found that uh, our medical paradigm has gone from uh, trying to heal people to actually uh, it's just more about money and making uh, hospitals money, insurance companies money. It's uh, no longer about taking care of the individual. It's uh, uh, more about doing what's best for the, uh, the industry. And so I found that as I practiced medicine in the beginning, I called it the golden age of medicine because we were pretty much able to do what was best for the patient. We didn't have protocols. We used our intuition and we uh, took care of people in the best manner we knew. And we were trained by other doctors who did similar things. And then as my medical training continued, the PPOs, HMOs, uh, pharmaceutical industry, hospital industry, they actually took away the power of the doctors to do what was best for the clients and started making uh, protocols for the doctors and standards of care and, and uh, had the boards reprimand doctors that were practicing outside the scope of their practice, outside of the standards of care, and so you got punished for following your intuition, following what you felt was best for the patient. And as this went on, I was, uh, I was very fortunate because I was able to train under some of these older doctors who were quite fascinating and they had abilities that went beyond their medical training. It went into their intuition, their uh, actual healing of people. And I enjoyed these older doctors because they were just magnificent beings and they did the best they could for their patients and their clients. And I when I uh, got cancer at the age of 29 uh, and the medical profession couldn't offer me any type of cure or hope, literally they, the radiation wouldn't work, the surgery would have left me uh, paralyzed, the, uh, uh, the chemotherapy did not do anything to the malignant melanoma and so they told me, well, you're doing okay. Why don't you go home and get ready to die? You'll be dead in about two to three months. And I just wasn't ready to accept that because as I got with some of the older docs, they're like, oh, there's a lot of different things you can try. And we've done this and this and this. And I got on my knees and I prayed and actually had the name Holda Clark come to me. And Holda Clark was a microbiologist out of Chicago, Illinois at the time, and she had been studying a lot of different cancers and uh, looking at them under the microscope, and she had found 99% of these had fungus in them, they had parasites in them, and virus material. And there was also a lot of gunk that she called toxic material. And as the testing went on, this toxic material was actually petrochemicals and uh, different plastics, different uh, heavy metals. And so when she wrote her first book, The Cause of All Cancers, uh, she included these things in there, especially parasites, because the modern medical profession was totally ignoring parasites as a cause of any kind of disease in the people. And so we uh, uh, 
I called up Holda Clark the next day after reading a paper that had been set on my desk and she taught me how to cure my cancer. And it was using herbs, chelation therapy, uh, energy medicine, antivirals, antifungals, parasite cleansing, you know, all the stuff that modern medicine does not use currently. Uh, and quite frankly, if you are a medical doctor and you use anything besides chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, you're practicing outside the scope of practice and the standard of care, and they will come after you. And they do come after you. And so it's, it's quite fascinating that, that we're in a period where medical doctors are bound by uh, those standards of care and the, uh, the different practice that they have to do or they can come under scrutiny of not only the, the laws here in the United States and the medical boards and the different uh, tools they use to control the doctors, but you can, you can also lose your freedom. And, uh, you know, some of the doctors down in Florida in 2016, there were, were 30 doctors down in Florida that uh, lost their lives. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people don't even know what happened to them. You don't hear much about it. And I can tell you, you know, instead of uh, putting you through the legal system and the torture of that, they just, you know, put these guys to death. And uh, I think they were assassinated. And uh, we don't hear much about this because, you know, it comes and goes. And we humans, we have a short attention span. And so we don't pay attention. But boy, I paid attention because I love Florida. And I knew a lot of docs down there, and two of them that got killed uh, were people I had met and had relationships with, and here they're gone. And um, so we're living in a very tough time to be a medical doctor, especially one who wants to actually heal the people. And I don't know many doctors that don't want to heal people, but boy, I tell you, when when you talk about doing things that are not uh, in alignment with what they're taught to do, they get mighty afraid now. And I can't blame them. I can't blame them one little bit. And so uh, recently, four weeks ago, uh, I had a attempt taken on my life. And it was quite interesting. I was up, uh, up north at a conference and uh, I got hit with a with a weird light phase rifle that I saw the flash and luckily I had put protection around me. Now we humans we have the ability to create things. You know I keep talking about creating 24 strands of DNA. That's nothing compared to some of the things we can create. Uh, but. I was told by St. Germain to put a protection around my body because there was going to be something happen that would harm me is basically what he told me. And he said, put a reflective material around you that reflects back anything that comes at you energetically and have it reflect back at the person or things shooting whatever it is at you, you know, and there's a lot of energetic things that we get hit with, you know, when somebody's angry with us, you know, it's like little fiery darts can be hit, hitting our energetic field and causing damage when somebody's jealous at us, any kind of negative emotion, these things can hit us and they do cause harm unless we immediately forgive the person and let it go and uh, you know and I use Ho'oponopono all the time I just you know to anybody who's attacking me I say I love you I'm sorry for whatever reason you're angry at me or mad at me or jealous at me or whatever it is and then I'm sorry that this happened 
please forgive me. Uh, forgive my, any of my involvement in, in causing anything that you're angry at me with. And thank you for teaching me uh, to be kind and generous and, and grateful that, that uh, I'm helping people and helping you to uh, have a better life, be a better person. And this whole ponopono totally shifts the energy so that it doesn't harm you and cause disease. In fact, Hugh Lin, L-E-N, who created, he actually didn't create the whole ponopono, but he did talk about it and was made famous by a book that was written about it. And uh, he was a very remarkable individual. We uh, took a course from him on the Big Island about uh, six years ago. And it was quite fascinating because he talked about energy and how energy can emanate from anything. And whether it's a good emanation or a bad emanation can cause you harm or good. And so when I uh, cured my cancer, I started using those things that I learned uh, from the herbalists and prayed very hard to have the best herbalist on the planet to come teach me. And lo and behold, this guy showed up at my office there in Cedar City uh, the next day and said, if you will open an herb store, I will teach you about the herbs. Well, the interesting thing was he not only taught me about herbs, but he taught me about crystals. He taught me about homeopathic medications. He taught me about uh, doing space time dimensional work and uh, going through interdimensional uh, patterns. And he taught me about the pyramids and how they focus energy. He taught me about correcting the DNA through our thoughts. And, uh, many, many, many other things. And he was fascinated that I was doing chelation therapy, doing uh, herbs, the, the few amount of herbs that I knew about. And uh, he was very pleased that I was open to learning more. And he taught me and stayed with me for four years. And at the end of that four years, uh, it was 2000, August of 2001 and he said he needed to go to New York City and uh, you know he didn't like big cities because you know for four years I'd been taught by him and he enjoyed being with country folk and people who were simpler and easier to talk to because he said as people get too uh, well to do they become difficult and they're not teachable. And he liked having people who were simpler and teachable. And uh, so when he went to New York, he ended up about four blocks away from ground zero. And uh, it was interesting because I was told by this book called St. Germain and Alchemy that was written by uh, Mark and uh, uh, Mark Prophet and his wife and in that book you go in a little bit and there's a picture of St. Germain and by golly it was the same guy that taught me for four years about the herbs. Uh, looked exactly like him and I called him up and I confronted him. Are you St. Germain? And he started talking about being in Transylvania and and, uh, you know, some of these places in, in uh, the middle of times and telling me stories about different things. And so I knew that it was him. Now, I had learned so much and was helping people to, to heal, get rid of their diseases. And this was against what the medical profession is about now, currently. And so uh, I got in trouble. You know, the medical boards came after me, the Medicare, Medicaid, you know, all these different things came after me saying I was committing fraud because 
I would diagnose somebody with a with a malady, a disease, and treat it instead of with the standard of care. I was treating people with herbs and homeopathics and, and energetic medicine, even crystal therapy, you know, different things and praying for people. We actually would have prayer circles and pray for people and and it worked. And uh, we experienced a lot of interesting things and uh, came to find that, you know, it wasn't making the system money, so the system came after me. And I gave up my medical license for my freedom. Uh, but not only that, but I, I gave it up so that I could continue helping people to heal and to learn. So if you have any questions about your health, feel free to call uh, the, the number and uh, we'd be glad to answer your questions. Now, all of us have intuition. I'm not the only one that has intuition. Mothers have intuition, especially about their children and their husbands, and, and fathers have intuition about their business and their families. And my, my deal was I was focusing on people's health, and I would ask God every day, the Creator, to help me with people, and I would receive intuition. And as I learned from St. Germain, I learned how to use kinesiology. And my wife at the time didn't like me doing kinesiology because it was muscle testing and I would hold, have people hold up their arm and I'd test them against different herbs, different ways of healing them. And I would get answers through their body's strength that their body would go weak with a no or it was bad for them and it would go strong with a yes or it was good for them. And this is how I did learn to do a lot of testing. And my ex-wife did not like me doing that. She says, you're a medical doctor. You shouldn't be doing this muscle testing thing. So I got on my knees that night and I prayed and I asked God, what do I do to keep my wife happy? And he said to me, I'll tell you in your mind. So you ask the question and I'll give you the answer. And what happened was I started hearing, uh, hearing in my mind what was needed to be done. And uh, it was a, a gift given by the Creator. And uh, as I you know, worked on my clairvoyance or clear seeing, I was able to see people's auras. And I'd always been able to see auras, but I could see uh, different problems in the body like you know if somebody walked in they looked gray I knew they were either on drugs or they had cancer and so I would ask further questions in my mind and receive answers and be able to die, uh, see exactly what was going on in the body and uh, my clairsentience also grew which is clear feeling I would actually feel in my body when I would focus on a person. I would feel in my different organs things going wrong. And like if somebody had hepatitis or their liver was bad, I'd feel pain in my liver or I'd feel a clog in my liver. Or, you know, it would be really interesting. And if they had a problem with their kidneys, I'd feel pain in my kidneys or, or a problem in my kidneys. And if they had a stone, kidney stone, I'd feel pain in my, in my uh, ureters. And, and if they had a bladder infection, I'd feel pain in my bladder. I mean, it was quite fascinating how I would feel these things, very empathic. And, uh, and clear audience, which is clear hearing, I would hear a voice say, oh, they've got this or they've got that. And so, you know, you could call me a little bit schizophrenic, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's you just kind of keep it to yourself and and hear. And